there were people on many different spectrums, you know, political spectrums and backgrounds, you know, people that, you know, that I know had old grudges and, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and it didn't, it evaporated. It didn't matter a hoot once people were talking about, you know, the neighborhood where they grew up or, you know, the place now that matters and, you know, and personal stories that unfolded their inner selves. This is Peak Moment. We are living at a peak of human innovation, information, wealth, and health. But we're also at a peak of population and consumption, with rising temperatures and declining resources fueled by cheap oil and gas. Peak Moment Television, bringing you examples of positive responses to energy decline and climate change through local community action. Hi, welcome to Peak Moment. I'm Jenea Donaldson. Cheap oil and gas and the automobile have let us be very, very mobile and our communities have split and spread and are all over the landscape. As we end that era, we're going to need to collect ourselves back into our communities to rely on our neighbors for food, for water, for manufacturing. How do we remake those connections to those relationships? My guest today is Kate Magruder who is the co-founder and artistic director of the Ukiah Players Theatre and the creator of the Place Meant Project. Okay, thank you for joining me today. Sure. You've been using drama for your community for quite a while here, and you've got a new project. Tell us about what is Place Meant, which we should spell out, right? Yes. Place Meant, M-E-A-N-T. That's what, right. How did this come about? The, well, the subtitle for the Placement Project is Stories of Why Where Matters. Stories of why where, where matters. matters. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And and actually, there's a there's a there's a long history to placement, but I won't go back to the very beginning. Um, I'll say that in 1994, uh, I've been working with Ukiah Players since I helped start it in 1977, doing pretty um, standard classical theater, contemporary theater, wonderful, wonderful plays. But I always had had a impulse to do work that was uh, grounded in the stories of this place because mm. I knew that story was what weaved us together and I wanted to know about the history of this area and I wanted to know who my neighbors were. One of the reasons why I came to a small town to do theater because I, I wanted it to matter to the people that were shopping next to me in Safeway or who were teaching my children. So I had been doing some original story-based work at the Playhouse, but in 94, at our theater, the Ukiah Playhouse, I started a program called Telling the Truth in a Small Town. And it was a, a, a very kind of loose program where I had people come who wanted to look at their lives and choose a significant moment or an event that they could shape into a, a narrative that they would then perform or really just relate to the community at the Playhouse. And that program, uh, Telling the Truth in a Small Town, became one of the most popular programs that UPT was doing. And I could imagine. I, I mean, this. first of all, it's radical. Telling the truth in a small town. <gasps> Whoa! <laughs> I know, you very, can imagine. Yeah. yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But I can imagine it be liberating as well. Well, and it was so, wonderful. I mean, the intimacy in the a sense. The intimacy. And the Playhouse is another. an intimate, is an intimate oh, little nice. setting. And so to have... I mean, we'd been, as I said, we'd been doing plays for years, but all of a sudden there were people who were speaking very, um, very simply and and deeply mm -hmm. from their mm -hmm. from their soul, really, about something that mattered to them, and the impact was so amazing. I could just feel the audience respond to it, and I could hear them thinking, "What would I say? What would I uh -huh. tell? What uh -huh. story would uh -huh. I tell?" And the and the web. You know, of connection that what that grew between the teller and the listener was palpable, and and I've been doing, as I said, projects on the local history. And so, a, a couple of years ago, I I launched a project called "Of All Places: Stories of How and Why We're Here," because I knew that was a common denominator that everybody was here for some reason. And yes. why, of all yes. places, were we in Ukiah, yes. California? Yes. that was a very intriguing question to me and so we there were about 18 people all different kinds of people from the community who kind of signed on for that project and we wove a piece of theater that included um, 
history of this area as well as personal stories from the people involved and some people did interviews with people to put together a you know a kind of a potpourri of of stories about why people were here and from that I gave birth to the idea of the placement project stories of why where matters and that came in a collaboration with the Center for Digital Storytelling. Do you know about the Center for Digital <laughs> Storytelling? It's in Berkeley. It was founded by a fellow named Dana Atchley and Joe Lambert in the early 90s. Digital stories are, are just tiny little movies, really. They're little uh, two to three minute stories that are um, put, on, uh, put on CD or DVD um, or video that people make using computer software, using okay. Adobe Premiere or Final Cut Pro. And it's and you know they record their they write their story they record it they then kind of storyboard it in with the images that they want to have illustrate their so story. So they can have video images That's if right. they want, or still, That's right. photographs, or still photographs, or scanned images, That's or right. whatever. That's right. So they're to, to tell their story. That's, yes, and the and the art and the 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 skill of. Uh, Dana actually passed on before I was able to meet him, but Joe Lambert has been carrying this on with his colleagues at the Center for Digital Storytelling. And the art in their work is helping people who come for a three-day workshop to make one of these stories, uh, people who don't know each other usually, and they start with a story circle as people relate what they think their story might be. And the the deafness of uh, Joe and his colleagues to help people distill that story yes, because yes. you know it you know they someone may come in with a story and with the questioning that Joe and Emily and the other colleagues there are able to um, you know put to use people find out that, oh no actually the real this is story, the story that yeah. I want to tell and so because then we may have a peripheral that's stuff right. or, the or a canned thing, you know. story you know as uh -huh, you know you know uh -huh. it's not, you know kind of a story that they're thinking of on the you know in the periphery right, but right. what really matters is something else and so uh, I went down to make a story. I heard about the Center for Digital Storytelling. I went down to Berkeley in 2001 to make a story about a project that I had done here called the Good War Project. It had been a big community project uh, about the impact of World War II on our lives. And I wanted to, that was a very wonderful project because it crossed over all boundaries to find out how World War II had impacted not just the people who experienced it, um, you know, by when they were living through it, but the other generations, sense, yeah. Yes. And so I wanted to make a, a digital story about that, and I went down to CDS and m made a digital story and realized that it was the form that I wanted to work in next because it had such depth to it. It was it was intense. It was you know bite size, and yet it included you know writing and personal narrative and music and imagery and it was so potent and and then you could share it with other people this is because this is really interesting because your background in theater you're working with an art form there that's ephemeral in the sense that it happens in time and it and dissolves then it's, gone. So it's gone so what you really are wanting began I, to work with is, is something that could on. be retained that's exactly right and also bring in other media that's than exactly you can do right. on the stage that's exactly right okay so i had fallen in love with digital storytelling i began to court um, Joe Lambert and, and CDS trying to find a way to bring them up here and over the last couple of years I've been able to find the funding to bring them up here and do workshops and by the time we did of all places I thought with Joe it's time to combine the kind of the live theater the live um, storytelling with digital stories so that's what the placement project is it's a multimedia um, story piece that uh, combines People, it, when we did it at the first year, this last year, it combined dance and live performance and digital stories that were projected. Aha! Uh -huh. So, so does that mean like the storyteller or or a perf did their own live? That's right. Dance with or the, singing right, or with the images that they created, story. projected behind them. Uh -huh. So it it amplified it. It illustrated their their story, and we did last year here in town two workshops, 25 people made digital stories about a place that mattered to them. That was the, that was mm -hmm. the theme, you know, some place that had significance for them here in this area. And we chose 18 of those to be performed in last year's placement project at the Playhouse. 
And this year, we've just done a workshop over on the coast and had people from around the county come and do that. So we're choosing seven of those stories, seven from the Ukiah stories, and we're, we'll be touring them around the county in the fall with a single performer who will who, who will be narrating you know, the, for the kind of, other various yeah, to, story to pull them together. Yeah, to but you'll have together. your your projection, so you can do yeah. it in smaller venues. That's right. That's right. right. And, and share that. That's exactly right. What's the what kind of response have you been getting in your community to to both participants and as well the viewers of this? People have loved it. It's you know, as I mean, it's again, it's that when when people are hearing or being offered a genuine hmm. a genuine. Um, you know, experience or story or reflection. It's an invitation to the person who's listening to imagine themselves, what they would say, you know, what they, what, what matters to them, what, you know, what place here has significance? Why do they stay? What do they value? What's been, you know, what do they love about this place? And it, then from that, I mean, this is, I think, you know, the, how I, how I, um, connect with what you are doing with this film and, and what you're asking people to imagine and to um, what you're evoking from people is that for me that that tenderness that grows between people when they hear each other's stories, when they hear really you know who somebody is or the experience that somebody has been through, the tenderness, the respect, the admiration um, you know transcends political beliefs and, and, you know, or, or, you know, religious affiliations. And so there is a, a, you know, a, a honest sense of community that, that is able to grow from that. I can imagine that, that, be, that, that stories, since humans are the storytelling, you know, our stories telling to one another how we learn right. how to live, how to respond right. to the world, right. how to respond to each other, who are our enemies, who are, for all those things are based on just stories. Right, our experience. We're living in a story right now that says, um, consume everything, growth is forever, we can keep expanding, 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 and the planet is starting to say, I don't think so. Right. So I can imagine the potential here for us to, we've got some new stories to, that are emerging, but need to tell each other. Indeed. Like, yes, it can be more fun to be more related and, and have, say, slow food right. together rather than fast food well, or indeed, whatever. Well, indeed, just that experience of sitting around at, uh, you know, a dinner table and sharing story, you know, the, the luxury of that, the, you know, literally slow food, let us take time, let us enjoy not only what we're eating, but, but who's here at Company. table with us. That's right. Yes, and find out about each other. You know, Which find is out fairly, about our families. Very much gone from <laughs> from the current you know the right. current family scene. Right. Right? So we're, we're we're you know reversing that and rebuilding or starting to build relationships. Yes, I could imagine that your project could, I mean, certainly build. Why do you love this place? Who are you in this place? What do you who who do you love? How would you imagine this place different? If, well, that's the next step, actually. Tell me that about I'm, this. and we're just beginning to play with this because we still have to finish the touring production and take it out so there's a you know there's a there's work to be done but the narrative that we're writing that will tie the digital stories together um, once it goes out the narrative that it's going to be set in a diner in in, in somewhere in Mendocino County oh, and it. the woman who a owns diner. the diner is is talking to the audience who's a customer who hasn't left yet about uh, this project and about people who have been making these little movies about place and then she will share them with the audience and and in that narrative she will be talking about what's going on in this community which is some very animated and exciting discussions about what this community will be looking like in the in the years to come we had a scare of, of this last fall with a potential development that was going to come in at a in a site just outside the city limits, an old um, mason, the old masonite plant has been abandoned, mm -hmm. and so now the question is, what's going to happen there? And there's agricultural land below it, and all of a sudden there was the proposition from a developer from the south to put in 700 units and a big super mall Walmart, and and it was clicking right along, and it so galvanized the community. It was interesting. It was exactly at the same time that we were doing the placement project at the Playhouse. So there were echoes they were mm. of the voices at the Board of Supervisors saying, this, we 
we don't want this, we're not ready for this, we can't sustain, we, this is not sustainable, we get the impact of so many people, you know, and, and the traffic and the, you know, water and all of that, we're not prepared for this, we must stop this. And the developer withdrew his proposal. That brought everybody's attention to the fact that this was going to be happening, these these proposals were going to come because, you know, the movement is coming right up the pike on, on Highway 101 from the south. And what happened very quickly in my mind was the realization that I didn't want to be part of, no, that can't happen here. I was much more interested in being part of the asking, well, then what will? Well, you know, obviously growth needs to happen. There isn't enough housing here now for the people who are here, much less the people who want to come or the children who are growing up here who would like to go out and then come back again. So we need to find a way to grow. Um, but the question is how and how, you know, what are the possibilities for that and how marvelous could they be? And, in, in, you know, connected with, you know, with housing, then how are we growing agriculturally and how are we, you know, how are we growing culturally and how are we growing, you know, in, in, in all of those ways that makes a sustainable intact village. And as we get higher and higher gas prices, sprawling isn't going to be the answer. So how it's can we, certainly not going you know, to be the, answer. The, the wonderful things that other communities are doing with, with zero energy housing. Yes. I mean, that are yes. generating their own solar and their own heating yes. and yes. their own cooling. I yes. mean, you have an opportunity we here. We don't have we to all invent do, the wheel. To, to do compact, walkable, livable. That's right. Uh, and yeah, again, that's more right. connected. Vibrant communities. communities. And the thing that, because of my experience and my, and my background and my orientation, I don't know, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't know about, I don't know, you know, zoning and policy and all of that. But what I know is that sharing stories helps people um, appreciate each other. And not, they, it helps people understand about their own selves and who they are and how they got to be that way and, you know, what they care about. But it also lets them care about their neighbors. And that for me, the secret, the key to being able to do what could be possible here in the next hundred years, because that's really what I would like to help us imagine, to do that, I think the key is going to be having people care about each other, having people mm. want to work this out together, having people trust each other that they can. And, you know, that, that respect and admiration and tenderness um, I think is going to be the foundation for uh, sorting out some probably, you know, there's going to be some tough decisions and compromises. What and I hear that's potential in here, as you talk about the respect for one another, is that in a community that's perhaps divided, um, even in a country that oh, seems yes. to be, oh, appears yeah. to be divided, yes. or the media tells us is divided, is you have the chance to, to, to move beyond any sense of ideological division into just our shared humanness and our hearts and yes. our ability to care for one another and say, we want a vibrant living community that's for safe for our children and we have good, fresh local food and we all benefit from that that's right. regardless of our affiliations. And there are fascinating flags. people here with all different backgrounds and how do we integrate ourselves, how do we, you know, how do, you know, the the large Latino community, you know, the original Native American community, the, uh -huh. the layers of, of other cultures that have come here, you know, over the last 150 years, you know, how do we find out about each other and appreciate what each group brings to the table, what each background brings to the table. And that's what story can do. That wonderful quote by Christina Baldwin, who wrote a marvelous book called Story Catcher, um, is, I, I, it rolls around in my head all day long, opinions make walls, stories make bridges. And I think that's oh. going to be the, you know, that's my own little mantra, you know. Opinions make, make walls. walls. Stories, Stories make, make bridges. bridges. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a, a beautiful it, mantra. To it have is. Here. It's a, it's a kind of a guiding light. Since you talked about the various um, cultural groups, the ethnic groups that are part, they are part of the story yes. of Ukiah. Yes. Have you made an effort to find people in the different groups to be oh, yes. part of the story project? Oh yes. Oh, so you're building bridges already. Yes, and have been for for many years. And it's you know that's it's tricky, and there's always more work to be done because it means breaking out of you know yeah. what's comfortable and and there's a lot of uh, you know there's a lot of history here, a lot of there's a lot of pain, and so it's not you know that's it's not an easy you know fix, but story is 
the story and food, you know, are the two things that I think are the, you know, are the are the ways in. They're both nurturing, aren't yes. they? They just nurture yeah. different levels. Yeah. I could imagine, are you going to videotape some of your performances so it can be shared with other communities? Because I would imagine yes. that seed in itself, when I think about bringing that, say, to our community, it'd be yes. fun to see how you've done that. Yes. Has it spread to other communities? Have you have you had other takers begin um, to do placement? Yeah. Project. You know, haven't, haven't, haven't yet. You know, we haven't even, you know, it's it, the going this fall out into the county will be the first, you know, foray out. Digital stories are so wonderful, too, because they are, uh, you know, they can be on the web. Um, there's a wonderful project. Uh, Joe Lambert helped start a project in um, Wales with, through the BBC. Um, BB, the BBC caught on to digital storytelling in a big way and they funded a multi-million dollar three-year program called Capture Wales and they had a little mobile unit that traveled around to the little different communities in throughout Wales and would stay there for a week or so and help people make little tiny digital stories about their lives and they now are on the web you can look you can get to Capture Wales just just by googling it and see hundreds of these tiny little two or three minute stories organized by themes from these people in Wales, and they're you know, so it's it's getting a just getting a direct route into their lives, into their hearts, into their humor, into their language, as many uh -huh. in Gaelic, uh -huh. um, and I I could imagine that I could imagine a capture Mendocino. That really is kind of what's in sounds. There. I mean, to have a website that's you know the stories of Mendocino, yes. the stories of our area. Right. I mean, that's part of building sort of that local identity. That's exactly in a way. right. That's exactly the flavor right. flavor of right. place. Right. Oh, that's right. so exciting! Yeah, we only have five minutes left. I feel like <laughs> I feel like we could go on for half hour. So, uh, so, what haven't we talked about? Where it's headed? Well, it's it's headed it's headed to I think imagine Ukiah Valley one hundred years from now. There's a wonderful woman I don't know if you've known of her, a woman named Bliss Brown, who lives in Chicago, and she has an interesting combination of backgrounds of. I think she was a nun, and then she was an investment banker, and then she was a Fulbright scholar. And, but she had she she works in a process called appreciative inquiry, and it's basically you know it's evoking stories based on people's um, greatest you know experiences. You know, so so to do an appreciative inquiry in Ukiah, we might say, what's one? Of, what tell us about a time when you felt so proud to be a part of this community? Uh -huh. So it it puts people into that frame of mind about, you know, really appreciating something. And so Bliss Brown created a program in Chicago 10 years ago or so called Imagine Chicago. And she enlisted the help of inner city teenagers to not only uh, develop the questions that would be asked community leaders, and not just the standard community leaders, but people who were really the people who were the movers and the shakers, not necessarily the elected officials, but the people who were really in their different realms getting things done. And they did hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of interviews, and they created this vision for Chicago. And that sense of imagine a city has now spread around the country, and and actually up into up into Canada, there's something that just happened called Imagine Calgary in Canada for the next hundred years. And that has really tickled our imagination here that we could do that, that kind of work, that kind of stretching it out over a hundred years so that it's out of one's own lifetime, so that you're not, so that people aren't thinking about yeah. what's in it for me, right. but the right. responsibility to think about what are, what do we want this valley to look like, you know, for our grandchildren. And and the possibility then of you know preserving the agricultural yes. open space, yes. the, what we love about this place, and and everything else that could grow from that in so many ways. And I would add, since we we just um, that that things that you may need to factor in that we wouldn't necessarily, things like water supplies Indeed. for more people or. Climate change that may, right. may make it drier here exactly. than it has been. Exactly. And will change the agriculture. That's exactly um, right. What could, what could adapt? That's to right. add those factors That's into right. people's imaginings. I can imagine it's a very powerful tool to inform um, a positive, hopefully a positive vision, and how to get there. Yes. Some pieces of how to get yeah. there, even though we won't know how to do it 60 years from now. That's right. But you could say, what about in 30? If, if this is what we want it to look like in 100 years, then what would the first 30 years, you know, what would we want to accomplish mm -hmm. by then? And then the next 30 years, mm -hmm. and then the next. I just think it's, 
it's it's certainly what I want to do for the next 30 years, you know, of my life. I figure here, you know, another good 30 years. And, yeah. you know, I can't think of anything I'd rather be a part of. And, and you know, that would, that, would, that would matter, why where matters. And that would be fun to do with the people I that I live with. I can imagine that everybody that has participated has just been, had a blast doing this. I mean, because Pretty you're much. also evoking, uh, you're evoking, what you're saying is your story matters. Your life matters. Yes. Your views matter. Yeah. And besides that, if you're doing it as a digital story, you're more creative than you thought you That's were. That's exactly right. All the messages that our culture, our, our, our mediated culture, is saying just the opposite. That's right. That your story doesn't matter. It's the person on television. That's right. Who, right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And and I think that that loss of the, the meaning, which I understand that place right. meant project. Right. You're bring introducing and saying there is meaning in your story yeah. or in your pain oh, or in your vision. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. we met, and it matters yeah. here yeah. in our community. Yeah. yeah, and actually, it matters profoundly in our community. It's what matters because from that, and from the wisdom that has come from your from your experience, from yes. everybody's experience, yes. from the you know what we have, what we all bring to the table. We need it. We need everybody to be engaged. We need everybody to be awake and alert and valuing their own experience and the experience of others. I, I think the gift of of treasuring the, the diversity, treasuring yeah. the diversity, I mean yeah. that to, to those bridges, that healing. Yeah. In the uh, in the in the digital story workshops that we did here last year, there were there was an uh, interesting. It was all it's all skate. You know, everybody gets to nobody who comes is. You know, everybody gets to play. Nobody is. You know, you don't have to audition for it or anything else. You you know, you come and you are. And there were many different. There were people on many different spectrums. You know, political spectrums and backgrounds. You know, people that you know that I know had old grudges and yeah, and yeah, yeah. and it didn't it evaporated it didn't matter a hoot once people were talking about you know the neighborhood where they grew up or you know the place now that matters and you know and personal stories that unfolded their inner selves and and then all of that you know all of that other stuff kind of just so, dissipated so, and yeah and you know you may still not agree with them politically or you know think they you but know but there's some other layer where you matter. do connect exactly that's beautiful exactly Kate thank you for being our sure, guest my and, pleasure uh, this is going to be wonderful to watch how this unfolds thanks. thanks this is Peak Moment and I'm Jenea Donaldson my guest Kate Magruder from Ukiah join us for the next episode of Peak Moment Community Responses to a Changing Energy Future